Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to visit an old project. Well, quite some time ago on the show, I brought you guys uh, my magnetic dust collection fittings. And so far, they have been absolutely incredible. I love them. I love the quick connect. I love the way that I can just snap my dust collection hose to any tool that has the four inch ports in my shop and not have to fuss around with those hose clamps. However, um, it does have its disadvantages. And one of the disadvantages is the magnets. The fact that sometimes they don't hold and you don't realize that they haven't held there until such point in time you run, uh, you know, a whole bunch of cuts on your table saw only to come around the other side and find this big long trail mark of sawdust glory all over your floor. So either way, we're going to address that today. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I've got in mind. Well, this idea actually came from a viewer and I love his suggestion and I'm going to give it a try on today's show. So what we have here is a couple of large magnets. Now these magnets are much stronger than the ones that I used for the original dust collection uh, fittings, but they'll serve the purpose for demonstration. When it comes to magnets, the majority of their strength comes from their um, repel or their attraction, their pull. So to get these apart, trying to pull them straight out is very difficult. They really have their greatest strength when trying to pull them straight apart. However, their weakest point is from their shear or their lateral strength. And that is why with powerful magnets like this, how do you always get them apart? You sure don't try to pull them this way. You always pull them to the side. And why do you pull them to the side? Because that is their weakest point. It's like a chain with the weakest length. That is their weakest length, which is their lateral strength. So the thought came to the viewer and he brought it up to me that why not modify your flanges to make it so that the magnets have no need um, to basically combat that lateral pull. And let me show you what I mean. If we look here on the dust collection, they do click in quite solidly when they are uh, dealing with their pull or their attract. But as soon as you put any kind of pressure laterally, and in this case, it can be something as simple as the weight of the dust collection hose, depending on the height of it from the ground, that can be enough to break the magnet's strength and allow the fitting to fall off. And this has happened several times. And I've combated this by adding extra magnets. And nine times out of 10, it works. But on that 10th time that it doesn't, there's usually quite a mess on the floor. So what we're going to do today is we're going to rebuild the dust collection uh, port on the hose of the dust collector and that all starts off with a little bit of scrap stock from the wood rack Well, I have this scrap of walnut that was in the rack and you don't have to use walnut if you're going to do this modification It can be three-quarter inch plywood any kind of scrap three-quarter pine. It could be whatever you like um, Either way I had this and that's what I'm going to use this measures three quarters of an inch thick by five eighths of an inch wide. Now, what I want to do is on the three quarter inch side, I want to run a rabbit all the way along one edge. And that rabbit will be a quarter of an inch deep and one sixteenth of an inch wide. And I want to do this all the way along the length of this entire piece of walnut. Well, here we have the original dust collection. This is directly from the um, dust collector unit. This is the main hose that travels from tool to tool. So the plan here, or the thought here, is that I'm going to take this piece of walnut now that we have that 1 16th deep rabbit, and we're going to build a frame all the way around this unit right here. And what that will do effectively is make a flange on the outside edge. Now we put that rabbit in there so that when it's all said and done, this 
um, flange or frame will be 1 16th of an inch larger than what this original is. Now, the reason for that is you don't know. There might be discrepancies in your different fittings. Some may be cut differently. Some may be a tiny bit larger. So this will help to accommodate those variances in your cutting or in your fittings. So this is an octagon, eight sides. So what I want to do at this point is I want to set my table saw miter fence to 22 and a half degrees. And we will effectively cut pieces to go all the way around this flange. Now, how did I come up with 22 degrees? Well, honestly, I cheated. There is a formula for it. I won't get into it, but if you have the Incra Miter 3000 SE miter gauge, I don't know if you've ever noticed here on the top, but you have a scale that will tell you how many sided object you want to make and what degree to set your fence to. So let's start off by cutting one of these pieces and getting it fit correctly. And there is our first piece cut. Now, the smallest dimension here from quarter to corner ends up being two and nine sixteenths. However, that may change. I think that might be just a tiny bit large, so I may trim that up later. But for now, what I'm going to do is cut eight pieces at this dimension, and then we're gonna do a rough fit around our fitting. Okay, and there we have our frame that is just dry fit together. And if we put it on here, now we can see this is just a little too large. So we're gonna have to trim this down. There's no doubt about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim all these pieces uh, over at the table saw. We're gonna get it down to its final fit to get this whole thing to come together. And then I'll show you what we ended up with at that point. All right, and while it's not a perfect fit, and I wouldn't expect it to be, these were cut on the scroll saw, I believe. Um, but what I want to do now is we're going to glue this flange together and we're gonna clamp it. And I'm going to use a couple of pin nails and shoot in through the side just to sort of pin it in place so that the edge of that rabbit that we have is flush with the top surface of our plywood magnetic ring. So let's get that done and see where we go from there. So before I attach this to my dust collection, I'm gonna take it over to the belt sander. We're gonna sand all around the edges here just to clean it up. We're gonna give the whole thing a good sanding. Uh, I may even put a little bit of a round over on this back edge just to soften it up a bit. You know, that's where my hands are gonna be as I'm cl uh, clicking it on to the other attachments. So I don't want a sharp edge there. Either way, I'm gonna get this sanded and shaped the way I want, and then we will attach it to our initial or original fitting. Okay, and I've got this sanded up the way that I want it. I actually routed both sides just to give it a nice profile. That's actually a nice octagon frame. I kind of like that. Uh, maybe we'll have to do an octagon frame tutorial on the show. Anyway, uh, truth be told, this is a pretty tight fit. So I had to go around and sand, or file rather, some of the edges of the original dust collection to get this to fit properly in place. So I'm gonna get this lined up so that, as I said, the top of that rabbit is flush with our uh, dust collection fitting. And then we're gonna get the pin nailer and just pin this in place. I was going to glue it, but it's such a snug fit I really don't think there's much point. I don't think it's going to, uh, to add anything to the modification. So it's just basically a wasted effort. All right, so let's get some pin nails in this. And what you end up with is this, this, well, in my case, walnut flange. So by clicking this now, onto these fittings, that lip, that quarter inch lip all the way around has effectively taken away all of the shear strength from the weight of the hose because the piece of wood is actually holding it. So if we click this in place, before, if you tap this thing, it would fall off. The shear strength is gone. That is a much better setup, a much better connection. But now, 
One of the things was when I used to use this, or still use it rather, on my thickness planer. What I would do, because there was a gap between the two plywood pieces, I would run a piece of electrical tape around it to seal that gap because otherwise the fine dust just blew out through the, uh, through the gap in the two, between the two fittings. Now I considered using um, some weather stripping, but I wonder if this flange is going to alleviate that. So let's head over to the planer. I want to try this and see if it makes some kind of a mess in my shop or if it has fixed that problem. Well, normally when I plane wood, it's a disastrous mess because of that gap. So let's just click this on here. And wow, that's a good solid click on there too. And let's see if that helps alleviate any of the problem. I got, I got my doubts it will, but I'm optimistic. Let's give this a try. Guys, that was awesome. <laughs> nothing, nothing came out of there. Uh, no electrical tape needed, but it was just like a one and a quarter inch wide piece of pine. Let's try something a little beefier to get a little more dust flowing through here and see if that makes a difference. That was awesome. I saw a couple small tiny pieces come out, but nothing like before. Before it was shooting everywhere. That's spectacular. Let's oh, pull this apart. Yeah, it really keeps it inside. That is awesome. So although I wasn't very optimistic, I know I said I was, but no, I wasn't. I was trying to be. Um, that's fantastic for a little quarter inch lip on there. So there you go, guys. That is just a spectacular modification. And there you have it. Magnetic dust collection fittings take two or 1.0 or 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. Guys, this is why I love my viewers. Um, I learn from you guys just as much as some of you learn from me. And sometimes, you know, you get guys coming on the show and they make comments like they're the big know-it-all and, and whatever. It doesn't matter. Look past that and you see some great ideas. This guy that came on and, and made a comment about the magnets and their shear strength wasn't being a know-it-all. He was giving a suggestion and it was a great one. Um, when I saw the suggestion at first, I thought, what is this fella talking about? And then as he explained it, you know, about the, you slide them to get them apart, I thought that's it. That is it. That is the cure to the problem of losing the hose off of the connectors from time to time. And I took his advice, ran with it, and here we are today with this wicked uh, modification to a system that I already love. Now, when I brought you the magnetic dust collection ages ago, um, there was the issues of the magnets falling off and I added extra magnets. So this thing here really, I'm not sure if, it's, if, if it eliminates that need or not. Um, the magnets that I used initially were very underpowered in the first place, but this definitely makes it so that the magnets that I have in place don't let that sheer strength break the connection. The fact that it corrects my problem that I had with the planer is just, you have no idea how happy it makes me. This is now a one click system for me that that four inch tube just click, 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 click around to whatever tool I want, whether it be the band saw, the belt sander, the jointer, the table saw, the thickness planer, it doesn't matter. A quick click and I'm done. And 
no more of these dust trails that are shooting out of my table saw or whatever because the hose came off by, by vibrations or I accidentally kicked it and knocked it off and didn't realize it. Guys, this is a spectacular modification, kind of turning it into a male and female plug kind of a thing. And honestly, if you have tried this uh, magnetic dust collection, you've got the pattern from me, this is a worthwhile modification and you would be so happy to do it to your system. Guys, give this one a try. I want to thank you today for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already, please, uh, click that like button, like and subscribe. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. This one's been a lot of fun. I want to thank the viewer that made this suggestion. I'm going to post the link down below to the original show so that you can put these two together and be able to fabricate your own magnetic dust collection. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.